Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the One Year Chronological Bible, and you can subscribe to the One Year Chronological Bible Reading Plan on the YouVersion Bible app. And we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And you can print out that plan, which will help you. And we're also on Facebook. We have a group of people gathered together, uh, many people that come and just go a little bit deeper on the things Mm -hmm. that we're reading. So just look for us, look for a daily Bible podcast under Facebook groups, and we would love to have you join us there. It's all about learning in community, folks. There is so much to learning about about God in community because we all, not that we all have our different opinions about him. But I think when when we all come together, we're adding things that we see. And there's layers upon layers upon layers that we are learning and reaping from each other. So yes, please join in the community on Facebook. And also, would you, while you're listening to this podcast, would you just hit the share button and share this with a friend and ask them to join you on this journey as you go through this journey um, this year? Um, and so just just hit the share button. Okay, so today we are reading Genesis 4, Genesis 5, 1 Chronicles 1, 1 through 4. Remember, we're reading the Bible chronologically. So we're reading the historical timeline. So there's going to be a little bit jumping back and forth as we're as we're going through God's word. And that's what we see today is the first time that we're jumping back and forth. So 1 Chronicles 1, 1 through 4, and then we go back to Genesis 6. Okay, so as you remember yesterday, we read about God creating the world, and oh, what a beautiful world that he created. It was a perfect world, and then the world was marred by sin, and today we see that sin continues to wreak havoc in the lives of God's people. Adam and Eve's son, Cain, kills their other son, Abel, and God deals with him, and Cain goes away from the presence of God. Cain settled east of Eden in Nod, where he started his family and generations after him. And then Adam and Eve had Seth, and Seth began his family, beginning with his son Enosh. This line of Adam, they called on the name of the Lord, but remember, Cain did not. And here's a couple of things that stood out for me today as I'm as I'm reading through this section. God did not turn his back on mm-hmm. Cain. Mm-hmm. Like he punished Cain, but he didn't turn his back on Cain. And here's here's Cain. He kills his brother. Then when God asks where Abel is, Cain says, well, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like that blame shifting that we saw with Eve yesterday. How often when we sin against God or against someone else, do we try to get out of it or make it seem like it's really not so bad, but God knows. He knows in our case, and he knew with Cain. And then Cain freaks out because his punishment is just too much to handle. And God said, calm down. I will protect you. And, you know, this brings me such great hope because while I've never killed someone, there's many times where my sin is so bad. And God's like, calm down. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I will protect you. And God, we're seeing, we're, we're seeing the framework of how God wants, again, we're building on the authority that we talked about yesterday and God's authority just continues to sort of have this ripple effect as it continues to roll on, um, as the Bible unfolds. And in chapter five, we see the genealogy of Adam to Noah and the years that these people lived. Seth lived 912 years there was a lot of years in here. And at first glance, you could almost gather that this was one big happy family that lived a good life, a happy life, uh, but it wasn't. What we see in verse 29 of chapter five, Lamech is Noah's dad. And he says, out of the ground that the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and painful toil of our hands. And so Lamech knows that Noah is someone who is special. How did he know? How did, how did Moses' 
parents know that he was special. I mean, I don't know. That's really cool that he knew mm -hmm. that Noah would be special. So jumping over to First Chronicles 1, 1 through 4, the genealogy is listed there in detail from Adam to Noah, and it mentions significant figures in the lineage, including Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and finally Noah. Woo! Those are some mm. names. The gene genealogies are presented in the book of Chronicles to link the creation of man to the line of Israel's ancestors. So we're going to be seeing Chronicles. It's like a, it's like a list. It's a list of all the things that are happening. And then within the chapters, it's going to be go into more detail. Mm -hmm. So Genesis 6 describes a time when the human population had grown so wicked. The Lord said he was sorry that he made man on earth and it grieved him to his heart. Um, the chapter also mentions the Nephilim, a mysterious group of individuals on earth during this time. It's like science fiction there for a while. I want to know what that's about. Mm -hmm. We really don't know. Um, but God is distressed and God decides to wipe out humanity with a flood. However. Okay. Can we just stop there? God yeah. is distressed. Like that, I, I remember reading through the Bible and that hit me. Uh -huh. This was a few years ago. And, and I was just like, he was like, we know God wasn't wringing his hands and going, oh, what did I do? But yet it grieved him to the core. He was sorry. He was to see what they're doing, to see the choices yeah. they're making. Yeah. It's That's a lot. It is, yeah. It is distressing when you know that, that you have so many good plans. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, maybe I am talking about some adult kids, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, there's so much good and I love my adult kids and they're for the most part making good decisions, but you know, it's like those bad decisions they make. It is distressing. And God was seeing this like multiplied everybody wicked, like not even mm -hmm. just bad decisions, wicked. However, well, I said everybody, not everybody. However, Noah finds favor in God's eyes because of his righteousness. I mean, that must be, how did Noah, out of everybody, like surrounded by wickedness, stay righteous? In Genesis 6, 9, it says, Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Wow. Mm. So Noah chose to do right when everyone else did wrong. Talking about like like peer pressure like everybody yeah. else was doing wrong but noah chose god he chose to walk with god and god cherished that fellowship noah is described as just and blameless among his contemporaries who and he walked faithfully with god genesis 6 8 says that he found favor with god noah didn't earn grace he found it i love that he found it. No one earns grace. Like we can't earn our way to heaven, but we can find it. It was true then and it's true today. And I love this from Romans 5.20, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So God instructs Noah to build an ark, giving specific dimensions and directions. And the ark is to save Noah, his family, and pairs of every li living creature from impending flood meant to cleanse the earth. So everything was going to be wiped out. But God made a covenant with Noah, promising salvation for him and his family and instructing him about the animals he should bring into the ark. So, Michelle, I know you've been up to the, the ark that has been mm -hmm. rebuilt in Kentucky. Yes. I've been there, too, with mm -hmm. our family. It's gigantic. Gigantic. It, <laughs> yes. Yes. Gigantic. And to think that one man was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build this. God asked me to do that. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I'm going to do it. I mean, that it was a feat. It was a lot, but he obeyed. He obeyed. Yeah. He obeyed. It took him a long time, but he obeyed. And I think that is something that we need to keep in our minds is that not not just that he withstood some of the the people who were poking and prodding him and making fun of him, but the fact that he was resolute, Noah was resolute in obeying God and doing mm -hmm. what God wanted him to do. And um, that, that he, Noah was, God counted him righteous. Mm -hmm. And, and this was a, this was a time when Noah didn't have God's word, like we have it. And it's, 
And now he didn't have the distractions that we have it, although he had distractions. And so I'm just thinking, I guess I'm there just was thinking wickedness, out loud. There yeah, there's there was wickedness, everyone. Yeah, there was wickedness right all around him. And yet he looked to God and God counted him as righteous. So basically, we don't have an excuse because we have God's word. We have God's spirit. <laughs> we are, we're not point. surrounded completely by r- r- wickedness all around us. Like... Okay, I know Noah's rising up as a little bit more of a hero in my eyes than mm-hmm. I've thought of him before. That's pretty amazing. Yep, it is. Okay, well, we need to take a break. We need to hear from our sponsor. And when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned. Okay, so the word of the day is justice, and justice is to make right. And um, the Bible refers to justice, again, to make right. Justice is first and foremost a relational term, people living in right relationship with God, one to another, and in and the natural creation. Biblical justice requires that every person be treated according to the same standards with the same respect, regardless of class, race, ethnicity, nationality, gender, or any other social category. And we see this in Leviticus 19, verse 15. It says, you shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, Mm -hmm. but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. So let's look at God's justice. Like, first of all, we know that God is justice. Like, and it's not just the justice that we think of. Like he is perfect in his justice. He knows, he knows what is right. And he knows all sides of what is right. Mm -hmm. Like when we sit down in a courtroom, we hear one side and then we hear another side. We, but with God, he knows, like, again, I don't know that I can properly even explain it. And maybe someone could do a better job. I know they could. Well, John was just on a jury last week Uh huh. and, you know, they present evidence and then they have to decide and everyone wanted to make a quick decision. And John was that one person that's like, <laughs> something? I don't know. I just have a feeling about this. And so they, they kind of made a, a harsher decision. Mm-hmm. And then when they actually go to give them the sentence, more evidence is, and there was more that they weren't first presented mm-hmm. that, but that, that, that feeling that like, I think there's something more. Well, God doesn't have a feeling like he knows justice. Right. He knows justice. But we kind of like, oh, is that the right thing? Right. It seems right. Or there could be something else. Yeah. Or we're partial. Again, mm-hmm. going back to Leviticus 19, you shall not be partial. God is not partial in anything. No. I mean, so today we saw he judged Cain. He judged Cain for what Cain did. Cain killed his brother Abel. But God also provides a way. So in God's perfect justice, he's going to judge us, but he's going to provide a way. He wipes out the world except for one family. Let's pull some strings here. We are seeing how God is rescuing his people. Like he's laying the groundwork for the rest of history. We're only two days in and we're already seeing like God has this perfect master Mm -hmm. plan and he's slowly, slowly rolling it out. And the application of today's reading sits in Cain's story, at least for me, and how God dealt with him. God didn't cast him aside. God didn't say, you killed your brother, you're gone. You you know, don't even speak to me because you're not good enough. Like we don't see that. We see that God provided for him in spite of what he had done. God provided for him. Now, God didn't, didn't count him righteous after he killed his brother. God didn't wipe that out, but God provided for Mm -hmm. him. And, and so I see that When I sin, I need to repent, not do what Cain did. Cain was like, what? Tried to blame, tried to blame shift, you know, and and Eve did that too. But I need to repent it. I need to confess it. I need to ask for forgiveness. And God, in his great, great justice, he is always faithful to forgive. There may be consequences. There may be some great consequences, but he will always provide for me and he will, he will always forgive. 
and he will always love us back. Like he will always restore us. Like in his perfect justice, he will always restore us. And and, and that's a great, great yeah. promise. I, I love that. And we need that restoration because all of us want justice. Mm. Like no matter yeah. what, like you talk about all the tribes and nations, yeah. you know, now we know what's happening all over the world. We could like watch the square of some great city because we have cameras, but even before then, like everyone around the world wants justice. Like they, mm -hmm. if someone does something bad, they want justice for that. Like it's, it's in us that God made us to want justice because he is a just God. And I'm even thinking of like, when I think of justice, I think of the justice league, Michelle, can you name the original members of the justice league? There were, there were no, five of them. That would be you. You're smarter than me. There's six of them. Okay. I'll give you a hint. Superman is one of them. Clark Kent. Okay. Yes. Clark Kent, Superman. What are some of the other people in the original Justice League? <laughs> Who goes along with Superman? Batman. She Batman. Robin. Yep. So Superman, Batman. Okay. She flies in an invisible jet. <sighs> invisible jet. She's no, I, I'm, 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 I'm Wonder I'm, Woman. Wonder Woman. Oh, Wonder Woman. Okay. Of course. So of Superman, course. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, The Flash. Uh huh. Green Lantern. Uh huh. And Martian, the Manhunter. Uh. Have you heard of that? He was after justice, I guess. Uh -huh. But like we, we have this heart of justice, and so this narrative isn't just ancient tales is a it's a window into our soul as human mm -hmm. beings the deep need for justice and grace so you know that human injustice when cain killed abel out of jealousy and even as cain is punished you mentioned like god protected him but then it's in the lineage like it keeps going down and with noah he found grace in the eyes of the lord so we want justice we want things to be made right and right there that sentence Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God is giving grace, even though the scales can't be balanced on our own. Like we could never, even though it says Noah's righteous, you know, you know, he wasn't perfect. Like he wasn't perfect, but he was at least trying to work and trying to know the heart of God. And so mm -hmm. we can be as Christ followers, agents of justice. We could stand against wrong. We could be ambassadors of grace. We can offer forgiveness. We can seek reconciliation. And we can remember that grace is for everyone, like you're saying, everyone, but we also need mercy. And that's what God does. Like we want justice, but we can never be just. We want grace and we can't do it on our own. And so God gives us mercy, which means un something undeserved, an undeserved gift. And that's how, that's how we get what we get because God has fulfilled what we cannot do in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is so true. So true. Well, Trisha, can you can you pray for us today just that we would see God's justice in our lives and we would feel his mm -hmm. justice? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you made us humans with a inner knowing of right and wrong, that we we want um, justice when, when we are wronged, when we see people hurting or we saw Cain killing Abel. We want it to be made right. But I, I thank you that even though we cannot protect ourselves, we cannot redeem ourselves, we cannot save ourselves, um, that you stepped in and just like Noah um, found grace, that each of us can find grace when we look to you, when we turn to you. And that is that you handle the justice part of it by giving us the grace. You take care of it all, Lord. I thank you. I pray that we may learn more about you. We learn more how to be just in our lives, how to help those, how to, how to seek out justice for those in need, Lord. But most of all, I pray that we just appreciate what you have done for us in your son. And we thank you in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Okay, so tomorrow we are reading Genesis 7, Genesis 8, 
Genesis 9 and Genesis 10, verses 1 through 5. Then we're going over to 1 Chronicles 1, verses 5 through 7. Then back to Genesis 10, verses 6 through 20. Then over to 1 Chronicles 1, verses 8 through 16. Then back to Genesis 10, verses 21 through 30. Then 1 Chronicles 1, verses 17 through 23. And then back to Genesis 10, verses 31 and 32. Remember, we're reading the Bible on the historical timeline. And so that is why we're reading some of the Chronicles in here, because it's giving us some insight to who is who and what is happening. I want to thank the team at Life Audio. It is a great team, a great partnership, and a great platform for many great Christian podcasts that have been created just for you. Go to lifeaudio.com. You're going to find podcasts on taking your faith and your understanding of God to the next level. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.